When we moved to Evergreen, to that little house on Bower Spruce Island, had a beautiful fireplace, a real fireplace. Also had a floor furnace. Well, we burned a lot of wood in that fireplace. In a lot of ways, it was the main source of heat. But we didn't like to have a big old fire going at night, so we turned the floor furnace on. Had been there very long, and we had a night when, in the middle of the night somewhere, I get an elbow. Donna, what's going on? The house is cold. Go to sleep. Well, it wasn't very long. I got the elbow again, and I'm telling you what, when she said the house was cold this time, it wasn't because of attitude at all. It was getting cold. So I got up and took a look around. I looked down into that floor furnace. Pilot light. Ah, who's been messing with the thermostat? So I go over to click the thermostat. It clicks fine. No fire. Ah, something's wrong with the thermostat. Forget it. Just middle of the night, early morning. Turn the cook stove oven on, some burners, go back to bed. They didn't turn on. Turned out that it got nearly 50 below that night. Probably had a little water in the lines or something with the butane. But at any rate, wasn't any fire going to be in the floor furnace or in the kitchen stove. So thank heaven. Roy had the job of keeping the big wood supplied in the adjacent bins. One on the left, one on the right. His big one, he had the big firewood in, and Rita was a good worker too, and she had the kindling in the little one. So, man, I got that fireplace roaring and going, went back to bed. Oh, it was kind of extra nice the next morning. The house was warm, and it was all from the fireplace. Well, we cut our own wood. Bill Olson and I teamed up, and Bill had a nice-sized trailer they pulled behind his car. As time went by, I wanted a trailer, too, and I kept kind of watching for a chance to buy one. Didn't have any money. Saw an ad in some sort of a journal that was circulated within the school district, and a mountain climber. I can't remember his name, but he was pretty famous because he was part of a team that, I don't know, they set a record of getting on top of the tallest mountain or something. And I think he got a few endorsements and was able to buy a better trailer, and his little trailer was for sale. It's only about a four by six, four feet wide, six feet long, something like that. Two wheel trailer. Well, we hauled some wood. Later it got modified. When I was principal at O'Hara High School, the shop teacher, auto, not auto mechanic, uh, metal shop teacher, Say, he said, I saw your outfit all rigged up going out to the mountains Saturday, and uh, boy, you had those uh, bikes on there, and you managed to get that boat on top of your car, and he said, you know what, I've got some boys that need a project, and you'll pay for the materials, won't cost you anything else, and I'll design and they'll build you, we'll tear that wood completely off, put a different frame on that uh, chassis, and fix it where you have a place up above to strap the boat on top of the trailer and plenty of room with tie down set up for your three trail bikes down below. Wow, he did that. Well, then the years went by and before he got to that stage, that little trailer had made, I don't know how many trips with us down to Port Penasca from Evergreen to uh, spend the Christmas, not the Christmas, the spring vacation in the sun. Well, you get out of Evergreen, Colorado, and go down there and lay in the sun. That was a wonderful spring break, and we did it, I don't know how many years, but a good many. Well, you know, there's a lot of things that go on in life, and one of the things that struck me about that motorhome, or about that uh, 
redesigned trailer was that then we got an old motor home and a big motorcycle and sure enough with very little modification I could take that big 850 Suzuki on that same trailer with the boat still up above we had a lot of good years out of that trailer and a lot of fun with it but just recently I've gotten a little older and the trailer's been just sitting out there beside the driveway in Yuma, Arizona. And a workman came by, did something for us, and he said, Hey, see you've got a trailer out there you don't seem to be using. I said, That's true. If you want it, you can have it for $50. And I think that's about twice what I paid for it way, way back there. He said, I'll take it. And I'll bet he and his family are having lots of fun now using that trailer.